Well, I know that summer begins officially June 21st, but we've had a few days lately, kind of muggy and warm, and kind of feels like summer already. To me, summer begins when I bite into that first beautiful watermelon. I love that. Do you know why watermelons get married? Why do watermelons get married? Because they can't elope. <laughs> they can't elope. Okay, so, I agree with the American writer, Mark Twain. I agree with Mark Twain. He said once, there's a little bit of good in the worst of us, and there's a little bit of bad in the best of us. I think the reading from the Jewish part of the Bible, the book of Genesis for us this weekend, it reminds us of that old sin of Adam. We call it original sin, that it's always with us. We can't get away with it. There's a little bit of bad even in the best of us. And that reading just reminds us of the classic story of Adam and Eve in the garden. And you know how it goes. They sin against God. They bite the fruit from the tree they weren't supposed to. And so it's a sense of rebellion against God. They sin. They feel ashamed, and Adam says, oh, I'm ashamed, you know. Now I, I, I realize I'm naked before you, oh God, and when I was innocent, I didn't have any problem. And then they do the shame and blame game, and then Adam goes, well, I didn't, it wasn't my fault, it was her. You know, she made me bite. Then she goes, it wasn't my fault, it was the snake, the serpent, you know. The shame and blame game. Psychologists have told us that description of sin entering the world, it's, it's solid even today. That's what happens. When you and I sin, especially if it's significant, we, we do realize we're turning our back on God's ways. It happens to all of us. We're all in the same boat, fellow sinners. And usually it does bring us a little shame if we have a conscience. And we do fall into the shame and blame game, don't we? Hey, well, it wasn't me. It was her. It was him. It was them. And, hey, I'm innocent. I didn't do anything wrong. It's the, it's the fault of the jury, the judge. You know, we, we, we blame everybody but ourselves. It's true. That's how sin works. And that is the first lesson from the book of Genesis, the Old Testament. So then what's the remedy? What's the cure? Here comes the gospel. St. Mark gives us our Jesus of Nazareth, who comes teaching the opposite of shame and blame. It's Jesus who wants to attract you and I in a closer walk with the Lord in the ways of our faith so we can avoid sin in our lives. We can avoid it. And remember, Jesus went against shame. Remember the woman that was caught? in sin, and they were going to execute her by casting stones, and there she was, and our Lord put that to a stop, but he told the girl, I don't condemn you, he said, but go, sin no more. He got her out of a shameful situation. You remember that. And how about when Jesus hung upon the cross? Whenever you look at any crucifix with the body of the Lord upon it, you remember how he always worked against blame from the very cross. What did Jesus say? Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. Shame and blame are the fruit of sin. We're all in the same boat. It happens to us now and then. And the closer we get to our Lord, the better we are at avoiding it. The Father.